This week on Sport Fishing, I'm in Florida, Marathon, Florida, and I'll be fishing with Bill Duffo, owner of Tough Coat. And Bill, thanks for inviting me out, man. Good, good. So what do we have in store today? We're gonna do some tarpon fishing. Cool. We're gonna go under, uh, it's called the Long Key Bridge, and we're gonna see if we can uh, hook us a few tarpon, have some fun with them. The tarpon are in the area right now. This is peak tarpon season down here in Marathon. Cool. All right, well, that's what we have in store. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez, and I live to fish. All right. <laughs> I have been fishing along the Pacific Coast my entire life. Oh! Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. doing today Dan is we're fishing between these two little islands here two little high spots the tarpon like to get in these channels and wait for bait to come off the high spots uh, so we're kind of kind of at a high tide right now so we're waiting for the tide to kind of go out and they'll sit here and they'll kind of ambush the bait today we're using mullet you want to use a nice lively bait take and hook them through the nose just like that why do you like the circle hook so much? I like the circle hook because it gets down in the soft of their mouth on the corner, and you don't really have to set it, it sets itself. Tarpon have a real hard mouth, so if you don't use a circle hook, you really got to set that hook and you're hoping it grabs. So I guess this type of fishing, you don't have to worry so much about time of day, it's more, I mean, as far, what I mean is you don't have to be here at daylight. It's more about tides. Yes. You need that incoming tide or that really hard outgoing tide. Exactly. That's when they feed. That's when the bait's moving around. The bait comes off these flats and they, they sabotage as it comes off the flats and the tide's going out. Mm -hmm. And then when the tide's coming in, they're picking it up from the outside under the bridge. So they're just out here to ambush them as much as they can. Exactly. And once we hook one, it's been a long time since I've hooked a tarpon. Is there anything particular I need to do? Or well, just... once, once uh, you hook one, the other fisherman rolls his reel in as fast as he can. You pop the anchor. The anchor is on a buoy system where you just let the anchor go and stay there, and then you follow the tarpon. Start the boat and you follow it. Um, you're not going to sit on a boat and in one spot and reel in a tarpon. I just saw a tarpon jump under the bridge. Yeah, they're rolling all through here. Yeah. Right now we're just anchored in this channel and uh, Bill's had good success in the past where these two basically underwater islands are on either side of us. And the theory is that the fish, the tarpon, are cruising in this channel going between the bay and the ocean. And the other side of the bridge is the ocean. And uh, from the plane when I flew in, you could just see how narrow the keys are. You always think of them as wide bodies of land, but these things are really skinny. In some of the spots, there's just like a little finger, and especially like where the bridges are. So we have these two big areas of land, basically underwater islands, that are gonna keep the fish in the center. We have a little bit of wind today, so that's gonna push the bait fish closer toward one of these pieces of land, and then the tarpon are gonna come in and pin them. So what we're doing right now, we're just anchored out here on the edge of one of these islands and we have our bait straight back. And the plan from what Bill's telling me is we're gonna stay out here for a little bit, fish until probably high tide, and then maybe go on the other side of the bridge, go to the ocean side and see if uh, something pops up over there. So we've seen a couple of fish already come up. We had one bite, but it was a shark and, and ate through the line. So hopefully we're gonna see some tarpon real soon. So what we're gonna do right now is we'll take a little break from the action here in Marathon, Florida and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's fishing trip. This week in the tackle box, I'm fishing down in Florida 
and I'm fishing for tarpon. And we're seeing a lot of tarpon, but because we're fishing on Bill's boat where we can go chase the fish, you can fish smaller reels. You don't have to have a big, humongous reel. You can fish with a smaller level wine like this. It just has to be strong enough like a 400 series. Lots of different manufacturers make them. And you're gonna to wanna to have Spectra line on there. It's really important that you have some Spectra line on your reel so you can get enough line on these smaller reels. Now, I wouldn't go lighter than 50 pound Spectra. Probably start at 65 to up to 100 pound Spectra depending on the fish you're seeing. And then on top of that, 80 pound fluorocarbon will work out good. Even 100 pound if you start seeing those bigger fish around, that will work out perfect. Now as far as hooks, for hooks you really need some bigger hooks and go with circle hooks. The smallest hook I would use would be a 5.0 and probably up to eight or nine-o. And I know these look kind of big, but they work out perfect for this type of fishing. And this is what they look like in the packages. Lots of different manufacturers out there, whatever you're comfortable with or what you like to use. These are mustads, but I would go with either a nine-o or a five-o circle hook. And you want at least three X wider, four X wider probably be better for those bigger tarpon. This is the basic gear that you need. You can catch lots of other fish with this too, but right now we're targeting those tarpon here down in Florida. All right, let's get back on the water, show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Well, we fished hard all morning. We had a couple of bites, but we never hooked a tarpon. We hooked a couple of barracuda, two sharks, and we got busted off on both the sharks. So now it's afternoon, we took a little break midday, and now we're back out here, we're at a different bridge, and what's this, a seven mile bridge? Seven mile bridge. So we're at the seven mile bridge right now, we're saying that fishing the same exact technique. We have live baits, live mullets, we have large hooks, seven knot circle hooks. We have both our rods back here. We have a ripping current. I'm gonna show you a close up real soon along the pillars here. The water's just ripping, you know, like a, a big river, just a strong river. And all this water from the ocean, actually the bay, is going from the bay water into the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and it's just ripping underneath these bridges. This one bridge up here is the old bridge that's been torn down and you've seen lots of movies and stuff. And locals come out here and fish off the bridge. The far bridge, the seven mile bridge, is the bridge that takes people from Miami down to Key West. So we're anchored up here. We can see a couple of other boats here. And the way we're anchored is we have a breakaway anchor. So if we hook a tarpon, or when we hook a tarpon, we'll release the anchor, put the boat on, turn the boat on, and we'll start following it. So let's see if we can catch us a fish. We're gonna get this, keep reeling. Reeling down on him. He's getting close to, to the boat. Forward? He's right here by the boat. He's gonna run. Right here by the boat. Here's our fish. Yeah, it's a shark. Black tip. Not what we want to catch. No. All right, here's a shark we just got. Nice black tip. They're fun sharks to catch. And if you want to catch a fish and release it, these are just as fun as <laughs> everything but a tarpon. <laughs> yeah. There he is, right here, next to the boat. Okay, I'm going to cut the line right here. You got him back to the boat. I got it. Yeah, not a lot of water skiers. In Florida. In the, key, in the Keys. <laughs> fun shark, though. There he goes. There he goes. There Broke Busted. himself off, perfect release. It's day two down here in Florida, fish out of Marathon, Florida, here in the Keys. Yesterday, we had a little success. We had some barracudas, some sharks, but we never got that tarpon. So today, fresh day, we're out here first thing in the morning about eight o'clock and we're gonna find a spot over here. We're working our way through the mangroves, through this, through this cove here, and we're gonna get over to the Seven Mile Bridge where we ended up last night. 
We're gonna get some live mullet that we already have in the tank, toss that out and see if we can get us a tarpon or two. So that's the goal. We're gonna work our way along here. Some beautiful homes to look at, beautiful mangroves. Seen a few fish in here, but we want to get over to the bridge where reportedly there's a lot of tarpon around. So let's see what happens. Okay, we got a hookup going here. Just got bit. See what we got here. Then I'm gonna keep spinning around. Okay. I'm Hopefully going forward. Okay, reel them in. Real, real. Why don't you come up here so I can see you? Okay. Keep it tight. What we got here? Straight up and down. Think it's a shark bill? Tarpon do this too, but he hasn't he hasn't breached. Yeah, he hasn't jumped at all. Oh, it's a tarpon. Alright. Oh, it's a shark. It's a big shark. <laughs> big shark. See if I can get him up toward the boat a little bit. Okay, back me up a little bit. Can you walk back here? Let's get him up to the surface more. There he is. There he comes. Okay, you got it. Just cut it right there. Put the camera into water. That's cool. I'm trying to save as much leaders as I can. I can get it. Well, let's cut it. Come on. That's a big boy. He didn't like that. He feels me pulling on him. Let's cut it there. We'll tie another leader on. There you go. There he goes. All right, that's my first big game fish in Florida. Not what we're here for, but that was a big shark. That was pretty cool. Probably a couple hundred pounds. I don't know, maybe 300 pounds. Yeah, that was 300 a, pounds. Easy. That was a good easy. six foot shark, big bull shark. That was pretty cool. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action. We're gonna go to the galley and show you one of the fish that they catch here in Southern Florida. How to cook it up. We'll be right back. Woo! This week in the galley, we're in Lakewood, California at Mama Sushi. It's a sushi place that I've been to a few times. Nice little restaurant, has a nice sushi bar. Standing next to me is a head chef here, Pat. Hey, Pat, thanks for having us over. Good one, it? <laughs> and what do you have in store for us today? Oh, we're gonna make some uh, sashimi first. Start with like uh, tuna with blue cheese and some uh, wasabi yuzu sauce. Cool, I never had sashimi with blue cheese. Yes. All right, how do we get started? Okay. So we're gonna start with the plate first. And what kind of tuna is this? It's a bluefin tuna, this one. Okay. So, yeah. Now I'm gonna cut the sashimi way. Make that look so easy. <laughs> it's not hard, not that hard for me, the sashimi. No. For real. <laughs> Now we have some blue cheese and wasabi juice sauce. 
This we can get from the Asian market. It's not that hard for buy the, the ingredients. This item, yeah. Oh, you mix it together. Yeah, we're gonna mix together the sauce. Try this. This looks delicious. Let's try it. With blue cheese. I never had blue cheese on sashimi before. <laughs> that is really delicious. Well, thank you very much, Pat. I've uh, had many meals with you in the past. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we got you on the TV show. Okay. This is really nice. Yeah, remember, this is Mama Sushi in Lakewood, California. Really unique dish. Never thought of having sashimi with blue cheese. Comes off really good. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. What we're gonna do, Dan, is we're gonna we're gonna throw some chunk bait out there, some chum. We're gonna cut up a, a mullet. One of the dead mullets we have. Yeah, dead mullets. Yeah, you know, as they die in the bait tank, we cut them up, use them as chum. Uh, it gets the it gets the tarpon excited. Might if there's anything cruising through the area, they're gonna see it. And, and they, maybe they'll get competitive and, and try to try to grab it and eat it. So I'm gonna cut up a little bit of chum. Here he comes up to the surface again. Yeah. He's right here at the boat. Here he comes, right to the surface, right here. Here he comes. Yeah. Did you get that? Woo! Nice. Leave the boat here. I want to pull them to the boat. We keep them out of there. We won't let them get to the bridge. Let's make them drag the boat. <laughs> What's really cool about this fish, we fished this one spot for an hour and a half. Didn't get any bites. When we looked over on the other side of the other bridge, we saw a couple of tarpon roll. So Bill said, let's move the boat over there. We anchored the boat and within two minutes, we hooked up. So hopefully this is one of those fish. They must have just been cruising on the other bridge. Yeah, he's, he's not very far Good job, away. buddy. He's right there on the surface. Here it comes, right here at the surface. Right here. All right, Dan, we're gonna we're following him now. We gotta keep him out of the bridge. Okay. So uh, we're gonna do our best. We got wind, we got current, we got a fish that wants to cut you off. So yeah, we're going to do our best to keep you from getting cut off. Dan looks like he's got this thing about wore out, but they still get a little fight in him. He gets underneath that bridge, we're still in trouble, but he's doing a great job. He's, he's pumping when he needs to, giving it a drag when he needs to. There he is, right on the surface. I think Dan's just about got him wore out. He's just a little one. He's about eight, nine pounds. <laughs> no, he's, he's a hundred pounder. Yeah, probably a hundred pounds. Yeah, nice Not nice as big fit. as my shark. But this is what we came for. This was the goal, was to catch a tarpon. We already got him to lead her twice. We're trying to get him all the way to the boat. Any chance you got to get anything on these fish, you take it. Here he it. comes, here's the leader. He's right on the surface. He's here right here next in. to the boat. Here he is, right here. Here he is, right there. Get over there, Kev. Beautiful. Hey Bill, I just want to thank you, man. This is one of those bucket wish items on my list. We're here. You know, to come fish in the this Keys and catch a tarpon. I've caught tarpon in Nicaragua and Costa Rica. Never had the opportunity to fish here in Florida for one, and I got one now. All right, let's land him, baby. I'm gonna grab leader. Oh, it busted off. Right there. Woo! Woo! That was a great fish. Got him to lead her twice. That's what we wanted to do. We were fishing a tournament, hook and release that we count. Had him right there, pulled on a little too hard. But that's what we wanted to do. Come here, come to Florida. And Bill was nice enough to invite us down. That was awesome. Woo! Cut that with his gill plate. Yeah. They have a really sharp gill plate. And uh, if they turn just in the, the wrong way, they cut it with that gill plate. That's why you use 80-pound test. 
Hey, we got leader. We got him. That's a, that's a landed fish. Yeah, that was cool. All right, we're going to take a little break from the action here in Marathon, Florida. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Woo! Yeah! Good job, Scott. This week's tip of the week, we're going to talk to you a little bit about what we did to catch the fish here while we're fishing in Florida at a marathon. And I think, Bill, one of the big keys or the big tips we should tell people was that live bait. You bet. Uh, fresh live bait. You, you remember the first day, our bait was a little old, a little sluggish, some of them died off. We didn't really have good bait. You know, we didn't get any hits. Um, today, we had fresh live bait. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the guy dropped it off, just, uh, caught, just it. caught it. It's fresh. We had you need to match your hook with your bait. We use mustad hooks. I think today was a seven aught. Right, seven aught circle hook. Hooks. Yep, and it was uh, it was ideal. So I think that was the that's your tip of the tip of the day. Yeah, that's the tip. And the other one last thing I would add is when we got the bait, we we're able to talk to the bait guy about some tips, what to look for for the fish. And one of the big tips he gave us was see the fish and then fish for the fish and catch the fish. And that's what we did. We saw fish breaking on a couple of spots. We drove the boat right there. We anchored and we dropped the baits right back. We used that live bait, fresh bait that we bought from the bait guy, and we used those mustad hooks and we caught that tarpon. Yeah. I would say that's that was what perfect. Tarpon roll. They right. don't jump out of the water, they just kind of roll. So when you saw those fish rolling, you said, hey, look at right there, let's move over there. They moved over, first cast, you were hooked up. Yeah, that that's this week's tip of the week. For Bill and myself, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.